Okay, in the same way that we looked at constraints and statical determinancy uh, in section 3.2, please go and revise that. Make sure that you understand how we applied this in two dimensions. Uh, here we're going to look at it in three dimensions. So remember that statical determinancy means that you, this, you have a certain amount of unknowns and a certain amount of equations and they are equal. So you have sufficient number of equations to solve the number of unknowns. And it's indeterminate if the number of unknowns is larger than the number of um, equilibrium equations that we have. Okay. So let's look at some examples. Complete fixity. So, okay, so here we have constraints at A. Okay. And what we see at A is that point A is constrained to move in that direction, in that direction, and in the vertical direction. Okay. But, so that means the it's constrained for translational motion, but what about rotation? Well, we can see that this constraint um, stops it from rotating about that axis AC. Okay, does that make sense? If some, if if I apply a force over there or over there down, you can see that those forces I want to apply um, that I apply want to cause a rotation about AC. But if I've got um, this connection over here uh, at B, then that resists motion about AC. Okay, similarly, um, point C resists motion about AB, the axis AB. And this will, this over here, link 6 prevents rotation about that vertical axis. So this is complete fixity, adequate constraints. Now let's look at some examples of incomplete fixity. So again here at A, those three links stop the object from moving in, the, in that direction in the three axes, along the three axes. Then these, if you study these carefully, you can see how these um, these pins stop rotation about the axes, but in this case it doesn't resist rotation about AE. Okay, so part B of the figure shows the same number of constraints as this one. Okay, but we see that they provide no resistance to a moment which might be applied about axis AE. Okay. So that's that one there. What about C? More incomplete fix fixity, partial constraints. Um, you can see one, two, three, these ones, or a few of them stop movement or translation in this direction. And these links stop uh, motion in that direction. And if you look at it carefully, it'll also stop rotation around the three axes, but axes, but uh, it is partially constrained because if I apply a force in the y direction, then none of these constraints will stop it moving in the y direction. So again, incomplete fixity. And then the last one we'll look at is excessive fixity, redundant constraints. This is exactly the same as the, the top one that had adequate constraints, but you can see it has an extra constraint over here, so it's redundant. Okay. So this is now constraints and statical determinancy in three dimensions. Okay, we'll look at an example in the next one.